Check it out, it's finally here, the Big Bang Fusion Motherboard by MSI. Very, very cool motherboard. Very extreme, really awesome for overclockers and enthusiasts, and it has the added bonus of having the Lucid Hydra 200 chip in it. Now, if you don't know about the Lucid Hydra, very impressive technology, very new. It's a little bit, uh, how do you say, it's not super, super perfect. It's not hasn't been perfected yet, but what it lets you do, basically, which is absolutely incredible, is use an ATI video card and an NVIDIA card at the same time without having to use SLI or Crossfire. Now, there are some limitations. We'll get into that a little bit later in the video, but for now, just understand that that's an incredible technology. Uh, it's, it's really new, and it's very, very cool. Imagine being able to use your old NVIDIA video card, which is pretty good, and then now you want to run the latest ATI card that's a little bit faster, and you don't want to get rid of both, but you don't want to run SLI with two older cards. Well, now you can use them both and take the advantage of having both of them without having to spend the money uh, to get a second card or to upgrade and then lose the first card. Very cool. Now, I'm going to take you for a tour of the board. Start you off on the CPU socket, uh, socket 1156, so we'll support your Core i5, Core i3s, Core i7s, et etc. et cetera. Uh, Very nice system as far as power management goes. Uh, the Dr. Moss system is on board, uh, so uh, very nice pulse width modulation. Uh, solid state capacitors all over the board. Uh, active phase switching, so if you don't know what that is, it's basically, uh, it has 14 phases of power two for the P55, eight for the CPU, two for VTT, and then two for the integrated memory controller. And basically what it does is it actively switches between them. It'll turn them on and off as necessary. So if you don't need uh, one of them to be on, it'll, you know, it'll just run on one when you're on idle, but if you're fully loaded, it'll spread the balance across all 14 and basically give you the most even uh, and best power it can, the cleanest power it can output, but that way you get the best efficiency. Um, again, solid state caps, ferrite core chokes, all the good hardware stuff. Another thing that's really cool is there's actually an LED on this board. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where it is. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Right there. That little LED right there uh, is actually, it's actually an LCD, uh, is actually going to tell you how many phases of power you're using uh, for the CPU. So it can use up to eight on the CPU, um, basically telling you, you know, one, if it's at idle, and if you're fully loaded, you know, running uh, Prime 95, it's going to tell you it's using all eight CPU phases. So it's very, very cool. Uh, great power setup for the CPU. It's going to give you incredible overclocking results, uh, as you can imagine, on the Socket 1156. Now let's move on uh, to the memory. Again, dual channel, P55 chipset, so up to uh, 2133 gigahertz memory, up to 16 gigabytes you can throw on this very, very fast. Uh, the dual channels for P55 are almost as fast as the triple channel. They give you just as much bandwidth because the bandwidth is no longer tied to the front side bus. It goes directly to the CPU. There's no tie, so you're actually utilizing uh, about 90% of your memory bandwidth with the CPU versus like 50% before when you're tied to the front side bus on the older Core 2s. So very nice, lots of memory. Uh, now let's move on to graphics. Now, normally P55 does not have a lot of PCI Express bandwidth. Uh, but the Hydra 200 chip adds an extra 16 lanes of PCI Express bandwidth. So that means that if you wanted to run multiple graphics cards on here, you can actually run X16, X16, or if you so desire, you can run X16, X8, X8 for triple SLI or triple crossfire. Uh, so that gives you a lot of video bandwidth, a lot of PCI Express lanes going to the CPU, so you can run these incredible uh, graphics combinations. Now on top of that, if you want to just use the Lucid Hydra chip, Again, it lets you actually run multiple cards. You can put an ATI card here, you can run an NVIDIA card here, you can run another NVIDIA card here, or two ATI cards, it's really up to you. Or you can also do uh, cards that don't SLI together, which are within the same uh, camp. So if you have two SLI video cards, let's say you have an NVIDIA uh, 9800 GT and you have an NVIDIA GTX 285, you can actually run those two cards in SLI, which you couldn't do before. It's not really SLI, it's actually uh, part of the Lucid Hydra system, but uh, very, very powerful, uh, you know, technology that you can use to get more performance and save you money. Basically, there's there's three modes. There's the X mode is going to let you do the NVIDIA cards um, and the ATI cards mixed. The N mode lets you do dual NVIDIA cards, but again, ones that weren't uh, possible to SLI before because they weren't compatible. And then the R mode lets you do dual ATI cards. So if you want to do a 4890 and a 5870, you could run those in Crossfire, no problem. So very, very cool to have all those modes. Uh, and so beyond that, there also are two PCI slots and two PCI Express X1 slots. One of those slots, though, is going to be uh, populated by this. This is a very, very nice sound card. Take a look at this. Let me, let me show you a tour on this thing. This thing is beautiful. Uh, this is a really nice card. It's called the Quantum Wave Sound Card, uh, and it supports some of the latest technologies uh, in audio, including THX True Studio, True Studio PC, excuse me, 
uh, and also EAX Advanced HD 5.0. What's really interesting is this is not technically a sound card. Uh, it's actually like an app layer add-on. It doesn't actually replace the sound. This motherboard still has uh, the ALC889 chipset that most, uh, you know, most high-end motherboards use for audio. So very nice uh, PS2s, I'm sorry, uh, SPDIF, Toslink, and coaxial are on board, and then 7.1 channel analogs. Uh, so you can do either analog or an SPD if you're going to a surround sound system. So very, very nice that it includes the sound card. Uh, another cool little add-on while we're doing these add-ons, check this out. This is the overclocking dashboard. Very, very nice. Basically, it's going to let you uh, switch between modes and adjust all your voltages and all your bus speeds on the fly while the computer is running. So if you want to increase your host frequency, you can just click it up, uh, and basically it just ties up uh, to your computer via this little cable header right here. Uh, so very cool that they included this. There's also a bunch of overclocking features, but we'll get to those uh, in just a second. First, we're going to talk about SATA ports because there's a lot of them. So starting off over here, six SATA ports. These are the ones that go to the P55, so these are going to use the Intel matrix, uh, RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. You also have a J-Micron chip that controls an additional four uh, USB 2.0, I'm sorry, uh, SATA headers over here. These are internal headers. Uh, so in an extra four right here, so that's 10 in total, plus there's two eSATAs on the back panel. So let's go to the back panel. I want to show you those. Check this out, back panel out. Incredible. Uh, take it for a tour. PS2s, USB 2.0, eSATA USB 2.0 combo. This is for the OC uh, console. Another two USB 2.0s, one that's an eSATA combo. That's a 10 USB 2.0s in the to uh, total in the back with the rest that I'm going to show you here. Uh, dual gigabit Ethernet, Firewire, uh, and then that's basically it. So 10 USB ports in the back, and uh, it's not over. Headers. You have lots of headers. Uh, you have two USB headers and Firewire headers. So that means that you can have two Firewires in total, as well as 12, 14, 14 USB 2.0 ports. That's ridiculous. That is a lot uh, of US co USB connectivity. Now let's talk a little bit about the buttons and all the crazy little features that are down here because there's a ton of them. Uh, start you off with the clear CMOS button. Very obvious. You know what it does. It clears the CMOS and basically sets you back to your standard BIOS settings. OC Genie uh, is kind of like that automatic overclocking. This button has a ton of features. It can do so many things. Very, very powerful. Also, I want to show you over here. These are really cool buttons. They're right on the motherboard. You have the green power button, uh, the reset button and the power button so they're really cool you just kind of like touch them and they work there's no there's no actual button they're just like touch sensitive very uh, very very cool that it has that also another really cool uh, option or feature that you're not going to see on other motherboards except for maybe some really high-end ASUS boards are these uh, these voltage checkpoints they call them V checkpoints but basically you can check CPU uh, your termination voltages your memory voltages uh, your platform control hub or your PC5 chipset uh, voltages uh, so very, very cool. You can basically stick a multimeter in there uh, and check the actual voltage. It's not what the BIOS says. It's not what CPU-Z says. It's the actual voltage checked via multimeter. So very, very cool. If you're an extreme overclocker, those are very impressive to have uh, and are really nice. Uh, and that's basically it. This is a sick, sick motherboard. Uh, now, real quick, let me pull out my pad here. I want to show you uh, a couple of limitations that this board does have as far as the Lucid Hydro chip is concerned. Now remember, you can run Crossfire, you can run SLI, standard Crossfire, uh, you can run multiple NVIDIA cards that don't do SLI or multiple ATI cards that don't do Crossfire, but these are the limitations, so get this. Uh, the cards that are supported from NVIDIA are the GTX 200 series and the GeForce 9000 series. So the G90 GPU and the GT200 GPUs are the ones that work. Uh, does not support dual GPU cards, so no GTX 295 um, and no 9800 GX2. Uh, now, as far as Radeon cards goes, you have 4000 series cards and 5000 series cards. Again, no dual GPU cards, no 487X2s, uh, no 5950s, or I'm sorry, 5970s. Uh, those are not going to work at all. Don't even try to use them. Uh, and there are some limitations as to what games you can do, so make sure you look up on the internet uh, which are the supported games for the X mode, which is the mode that lets you do the ATI and the NVIDIA cards. So there you have it, the Fusion. Very nice, incredible board. Awesome for overclockers. Tons of USB 2.0 ports, tons of SATA ports. It's got eSATA. It's got 7.1 channel HD auto with EX, uh, HD 5.0, which is really, really cool. If you've never used it, it's a really neat feature from Creative Labs. Uh, it's an incredible motherboard. And on top of all of that, it has the Lucid Hydrid 200 chip to boot, which not only lets you run uh, the extra 
um, you know, the extra advantage of having to be able to run the two different types of cards, but it also adds 16 lanes of PCI Express. So even if you didn't plan on using it for that purpose, or an ATI on an SLI card or two SLI cards that didn't work together before, uh, it's still going to give an extra 16 lanes of PCI Express bandwidth. So that means that you can also add, uh, you know, triple SLI and make it work or triple uh, three-way crossfire, and it'll work even better. So awesome board. I'm blown away. I love it. It's great. If you have any questions on it, email me, and I will see you guys next time. For more information on the MSI Big Bang Fusion motherboard, type in M452-6083 into any major search engine.